my lecture is uh, screen is visible to you uh, lecture number 9 of uh, programming in c so i think we have already covered up to slide number 24 last time so yeah functions from the c we will start so today we are going to learn both user defined and a standard library functions we are already using standard library function except the fact that we don't know them they are the standard library functions but whatever command you are typing in your c most of them are the functions written into stdio.h as well as standard lib.h and there are some other libraries which we include like conio and mat.h also so a function is a block of the code that performs a specific task you need to create a program uh, for uh, let's say create a circle and then color it so there could be two functions to solve this problem first function can create a circle for you and second function can uh, fill the color so generally you try to divide the complex problem given to you into smaller parts and then start typing out the functions now there are two types of functions in c programming which are standard library functions and then there are user defined functions now these standard library functions are the functions written by the user only but they are so optimized that c has included them into their setup and now whenever they distribute a c programming uh, they generally give away the standard library functions so some standard library functions which we have already seen are printf then stdio.h then uh, sqrt uh, and uh, which is from mat.h and uh, stdio.h is for printf now how a user defined function will work like uh, this is a sample code uh, here you can see that there is a uh, include stdio.h then there is something called as void and then this function name can be anything let's say void uh, let's say i want to define a function called ninad so i will write void and then i will write ninad and that will become a function and then bracket open and close so this particular way is a user defined function and once you write the code inside this function you always try to give out some return statement uh, so that that function once it is evaluated it goes back why we want want to write a function because this is the part of the code which is required repeatedly so if you don't have a repeated calling to something please don't write functions try to write a straight forward sequential program like 1 2 3 4 and end of the program but in case you want to calculate repetitive work like even your calculator you might have to do additions multiple time with different numbers then it's better to write a function so function name basically uh, to call a function name you can directly type uh, the name inside this uh, main code so generally uh, function name is end with a semicolon and if it is not defined then user will get an error uh, that this uh, command is not known and function will always have a opening bracket and closing bracket to indicate that there is some argument which is to be passed uh, if that is a blank argument then you don't have to put anything inside this functions so how a c program works in function first you include some libraries we include four of them which are stdio.h conio.h standard lib.h and then mat.h then we define actual functions uh, the c program will directly go to the main it will not execute the function first it will start executing this line this line this line then it will hit a function name which is not in their standard libraries it will search for this function name on the entire code throughout the code whenever it finds that particular piece of code it uh, it executes if it doesn't find it will give an error at this particular point typically if the function definitions are done before the main loop uh, because uh, the program execution will start from the main and it is always better for c program to have a function defined before the main but some users have a habit of defining everything at the end that is not totally wrong but yes that is a uh, one of the habits of the programmers and which is fairly good for the programming statements like python or matlab or even any higher language programming where functions are defined after your main calling 
then uh, functions names are identified should be unique so you cannot write a function called add because it's a standard word you cannot write a function called uh, maybe divide or subtract try to avoid these standard names because what will happen the in in program function got executed and not the standard function which is there by the c program so if you declare your own printf function uh, basically that will get executed and it won't uh, allow us to uh, run the original printf uh, program into the li standard library so a user defined function is at a higher priority uh, than the functions which are defined already into the standard libraries and that's why never use any function name as a standard name so advantage of user defined functions are the program will be easier to understand maintain and debug okay i personally don't like functions i want a, i am a very straight person so i will just write one two three four and it's single line code where line by line you can understand and the logic can learn. but there are some cases where function defining is must and my personal uh, advice to all the programmers is never write a function if not required and i can see there are people who always write a function even if they want to print a two statement they will write a function and then they will call that function uh, and that is where they say ki they are thinking of future but generally my personal advice is uh, whatever is your problem in hand just try to solve that don't look into the over uh, overview or the, what will be happening in the future just solve the particular problem in your hand now reusable code since you are writing a function uh, you write it so perfectly that you can reuse it in multiple codes as well as it's a part of the code which is required in the current program to use again and again so what is the difference between program and a code so program is a complete set in which you will have different functions defined and then your main okay so this is what a piece of a code uh, which we call function and then your entire program is including main and all the functions plus the standard library declarations that we do a large program can be divided into small modules and uh, typically uh, many modules are div uh, divided into many programmers so generally a software company will recruit hundreds of programmers and they will just ask uh, programmers to develop different functions for them and then uh, the main programmer or the team leader will actually merge all these functions and see whether they are running properly as a coherent unit so in a team of the multiple people writing a function is a easier way to do it not a single program can do a entire coding for the entire company so let's see uh, how to define a user defined functions so first example is create circle function so today we are going to learn a create circle function this is this will be a user defined function and we are following a camel case for this as you know camel case uh, if you want to write i am ninad uh, so wherever there is a space you will uh, remove that space in camel uh, camel case and whatever is the letter after a particular space removal you will capitalize it so you will write i a capital m n capital uh and a and a t okay i forgot to put d over here so this is how a camel case writing looks like and uh, this is done because none of the older programming languages like c programming and all support space bar so space is not supported and that's why camel case function concept came into the picture and those who have worked with arduino and so on they have might have seen these kind of random uh, capitalization of the letters in between and unfortunately they carry this function of writing wrong english into their regular writing also so try to avoid this kind of writing but whenever you define something like this it's called camel case and they are generally non standard ones so it's always better to use a camel case for the functions then uh, we also define something called as color function so let's see how this particular program works now here what we are uh, using is defining a function called add numbers for addition of the two numbers and uh, as i mentioned it was not needed but just to learn how to add two numbers with the help of the function we are doing it 
so one can do just uh, do a plus b and do in in the in the main program but now we are uh, trying to learn how to create a function with the user defined function so first line is include stdi.h along with that you have your four other library declarations uh, i am not sure whether i have started the recording of the lecture but i think i have so in case i forgot i will re record this part uh, let me just check so you uh, okay i have started the record thank you so let's go back to the function definition uh, so what we have done is firstly uh, we have taken a two integers uh, where we just say we are going to define a function called add numbers uh, and then i don't know where is that mouse pointer gone so basically uh, uh, this is just a function prototype that we declare in the beginning and <clears throat> this is needed because we are declaring the function after the main so that's why i will just say after the include of libraries i will say i am going to define a integer so add numbers will return me the value integer and it will input the two values from the main program that is in the format of int so integer lega a function and integer output pe dega uh, the actual program starts here so just forget about this line for a moment where we define a function uh, why this add numbers is there there is no logic you can write ninad over here you can write uh, anything that you want and then int a and int b again there is no logic you can write int c int d so actually function mein jab call karte to ye a b hota bhi nahi hai to so, yahan pe jo bhi hoga वैल्यू उसको वो ए एस्यूम कर लेता है सो दैट्स व्हाई जस्ट रिमेंबर दिस इंट ए इंट बी या फिर इसको ए ही कहना है बी ए कहना है ऐसा कोई रूल नहीं है एंड इवन एड नंबर ये भी आपके हाथ में आप जो चाहे वो नाम दे दो उसको उसका पर्पज जो है वो एडिशन ऑफ द टू नंबर है सो लेट सी हाउ दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रोग्राम वर्क इंट मेन इज द मेन प्रोग्राम नाउ डोंट राइट वाइड वेन एवर यू आर राइटिंग अ फंक्शन बिकॉज देर आर चांसेस दैट पर्टिकुलर फंक्शन विल रिटर्न समथिंग so try to declare the data type for the functions for the main you are not returning anything so here void will still work but now uh, we are trying to set you up so always say ki whenever using a function i will declare int as my main data type so uh, in the main program i will read three numbers n1 n2 and sum and then i will say print f enter two numbers so user will be asked for the two numbers then i will do scan f percent d percent d then ampersand n1 and ampersand n2 so this part is very clear because we are uh, reading two integer values n1 and n2 from the user now instead of doing n1 plus n2 we are actually calling our user defined function called add numbers and then we are passing n1 and n2 as a sum okay so whatever answer will be returned by this particular function will be stored as a sum then print f sum equal to percent d answer whatever you re required and this sum has to be defined earlier so that is what we have defined over here and then return zero so this is the main program so only unknown line is this function call which is now we are declaring after the main program here we will write int add numbers int a comma b so this line is same as what we seen above where we call function prototype and function definition see the only difference between the both is whenever you are function prototyping or telling a c program that you are going to write a function you have to apply a semicolon now some of you will not write this function prototyping and there are some compilers which can still run the function but it is not so good practice that you are writing some function that you don't know and you are not declaring it at the beginning सी प्रोग्राम बोलेगा तो पहले सारा डिक्लेरेशन आपको करना ही है ओके सो एन वन हो एन टू हो सम हो ये ऑल जैसे आप वेरिएबल डिक्लेयर कर देते हो कि ये इन टाइप में है उसी तरह से फंक्शन आल्सो डिक्लेरेशन करना जरूरी होता है इफ यू आर वर्किंग विद डॉस नो दिस फैंसी आईडीज विल वर्क एंड यू विल गेट एन एर सो डोंट हैव दिस हैबिट ऑफ यूजिंग वेरी फैंसी ए बेस्ड आई वेयर इट ऑलवेज सजेस्ट यू वॉट टू राइट always try to do your programming on a dos base uh, without windows also it will work 
and uh, by that way you become a very good programmer especially since you are a computer engineering student i am telling you this explicitly try to do a programming on a dos based machine and then only your programming will be so perfect that you won't make any mistakes in the future so now come to the actual function declaration here first we define what is the data type that is going to get returned then you say add numbers int a comma int b so it will accept two integers now remember actually we have passed n1 and n2 and here we are defining a and b so basically n1 will be automatically equal to a and n2 is automatically equal to b now there are some cases where you declare multiple things and they are not actually passed that is okay but it should not happen that you uh, pass multiple things and your function accepts only one input so instead of int b if i have only int a over here this would have resulted into an error now once you go inside you declare another variable called results uh, to avoid this multiple declarations you can do a global declaration outside the main like int add numbers uh, below that you can declare all your variables one at a time and they can be used throughout your functions but in if not you have to declare it locally so remember the result inside the add numbers may not be same as the result inside the main they have totally avoided this confusion by using sum in the main function and result in a uh, user defined function but anyways you can have same result but one result inside a main will have different value and result inside your user defined function can have a different value so remember global declaration means result will remain same throughout the functions including main or a user defined and uh, if it not then uh, basically uh, you can have your individual declarations inside each curly bracket opening and closing now result equal to a plus b and then you return the result so instead of return 0 which is our typical practice of returning nothing we actually return the result and this result will get assigned to the sum and finally you can do the addition so at the end of this lecture i want you to do this particular program uh, where you will define your own user defined function but instead of add numbers i want you to multiply two numbers and return their results uh, a say very similar code only change you have to do is a plus b ki jagah aapko a into b likhna hai now function prototype so function prototype is similar to the declaration of the functions that specifies the function name parameters and return type it does not contain the function body a function prototype gives a information to the compiler that particular function may be later used in the program a syntax of function prototype is return type which is apne case mein int tha then function name apna naam tha add numbers then type 1 argument 1 type 2 argument 2 and so on apne case mein do hi argument the int type ke a argument tha aur int type ka b argument tha ye argument kya hota hai to jo function ko pass hoti hai us cheez ko hum argument bolte hai aur jo result hota hai usko hum return bolte hai so function will have argument there are some functions which do not require any argument so at that case you just have to put a opening bracket and a closing bracket and uh, there are some functions which do not return anything at that time you can just write void main uh, jaise likhte hai bracket open bracket close waise hi now in above example int add numbers int a comma int b where the function prototype declared where the name of the function is add numbers then the return type is int and two arguments are also int type the function prototype is not needed if the user defined function is before the main function so as i have mentioned there are some people who write the main function uh, after your all function definitions and that's why the function prototype is not required there now how to call a function so control program is transferred uh, to the user defined function by a uh, calling method so yeah, during the calling method you don't have to write what it will return like int you can directly say function name then argument 1 comma argument 2 uh, dot 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 you can have n number of arguments passed and then give a semicolon again remember 
when you are declaring the function if you use three to four arguments then uh, you can have less argument passed while calling but reverse is not true like your uh, original function add numbers is taking two numbers and if you pa pass three numbers through this it will throw an error so this above example accept two arguments n1 and n2 which are inside the main function then uh, let us go to the function definition so function definition uh, basically it contains the block of code to do a specific task in our example it was adding two numbers and then returning those two numbers so when function is called the control of the program is transferred to the function definition and the compiler start executing the code inside the body of the function so next is parameter uh, passing a argument to the function how you will pass a arguments to the function so look at this carefully this was our program so we have stdio then uh, function prototyping or declaration of the function then your main and here you actually call uh, add numbers n1 n2 and then n1 gets assigned to a and n2 get assigned to b so this is how a argument passing to the function was working and then what are results got computed get assigned back to sum which is not shown you over here so if n1 is a char type and a should be the char type and if n2 is a float type then variable b also should be of a float type so sometimes uh, there are functions they can be called without arguments like i said just opening bracket and a closing bracket now return statement so what exactly what return statement does is returns the statement that is terminates the execution of the function and returns the value that is uh, assigned to the calling function so here what will happen sum will be stored as whatever you got from the result in our program syntax of return statement is return then expression now this is totally different from your python or matlab so basically return and in bracket you just write a or you can also return a plus b and so on so the type of the return value of the function is always specified in the function prototyping hamare case mein wo integer tha and function definition must match to the type of the return aisa nahi hona chahiye ki aapka return a jo hai wo character hai aur aapne function likha hai int add numbers now there are types of user defined function in c programming let us try to understand what are these different types there are uh, four program uh, which will use a different uh, user defined uh, number uh, functions for generating a prime number or not okay so we have already studied a program uh, where we have checked uh, it's a prime number or not now we will do it through a user defined functions however it will take a different approach in all four cases so let's see one by one how we are checking a prime number or not so first is no argument pass and no return value okay so let's try and see how this particular program works first line is include stdio.h second line is void check prime number so this is where we are defining the function it is not returning anything also not taking up anything then inside a main function we will say check prime number bracket open bracket close the thing is passed so directly it will execute there and then it will return uh, nothing is stored so then there is no storage and it will end the program so this is the kind of programming most of the python programmers also do they define all the functions and nothing in your main loop they just call the main program even you have this habit of running a exe file there are hundreds of file around that exe file inside the dot dat file but we generally execute only the exe file so exe file can be considered as this main function and all the rest of the files will have the user defined functions like this one so here just see uh, this particular case is not returning anything it will just get called and here we say check prime numbers and the entire prime number checking program is pasted over here so here we define int n comma i comma flag equal to 0 so there are three variables defined n i and flag then print enter a positive number so user is asked to enter a number which is stored into n 
then for i equal to 2 i less than 2 n by 2 i plus plus if n mod i is equal to equal to 0 then flag is 1 otherwise just keep doing this and at the end of the day if flag is 1 then that was not a prime number and uh, if the flag was not 1 then it was a prime number so a very simple code over here uh, this code does not check anything for n equal to 1 because by default 1 is also a prime number and uh, this function once executed it also has its print statement inside the function so it will still work there is no issue with this program this program actually takes input inside the function and outputs the code inside the function itself so this is the first type which we call no argument passed and no return value the second point is uh, no argument passed but the return value so inside this, let's say get integer is the function that we write. Here you ask user to have n i and flag defined, and then you will say n equal to get integer. So you are not passing anything. You are just asking user to enter a value, and inside the get integer function, what we are going to write, we will see. Then for i equal to two, i less than n by two. Uh, I plus plus again the same thing and if flag is one you break and at the end of the day if flag is one it is not a prime number and if flag is zero it was a prime number. Now let's see what is there inside this get integer function. So inside the get integer function you have int n equal to declared something blank then you will ask user to enter a positive integer then scan f percent d slash n and then return n. So this particular code will take a integer value from the user and return the same value. Uh, now you will say this is stupid. Why you did that? I know that it's stupid, but just to teach you it was written like this. It has no meaning. I could have done this into the main program. So always remember until and unless we repeat the same operation, there is no point in defining a function. It is always better to write a program straightforward without functions. But in case you have a repetitive call, I want to take 100 numbers from the user. Then this get integer function writing and every time just calling get integer would have reduced my length of the code as well as simple to understand. And it will also would have improved the execution also. So you can just write in the parenthesis n equal to get integer. So that is how the function is defined. That is no argument pass but the return value. Now the third type is argument passed but no return value. So let us understand how this kind of function is written. Uh, you have include stdr.h then void check prime number and display int n. Okay. Now int main uh, int n is declared. Enter a positive integer percent d percent n. So basically we are reading the integer in the main program. Once we read this integer we just pass it to the function called check prime and display n and then we return zero. Now what happens inside this check prime and display function? It will take a n from the user. Again, remember this could have been b also. It is all not always needed ki aha n defined kiya hai. So is declaration may be n ho. Aisa zaruri nahi hai. Same hone se kabhi kabhi overwrite ho jata hai. So ideally wo alag rakho ge to chalta hai. Koi problem nahi. Then int i comma fly equal to zero. Same for loop i from two i less than equal to n by two plus plus i. If uh, percentage i equal to equal to zero, then flag one, otherwise break. And then there is a rest of the part that is if flag is one, then you display it is not a prime number. And if flag is zero, then you display it is as a prime number. So this is the part. And once you complete that, this particular check prime number and display function is ready for you. So function is a kuch bada confusing term nahi hai. Function matlab kya aapke regular code jo hai jo line 1, line 2, line 3, line 4 aap likh rahe ho. Usme se koi bhi do teen line nikal ke alag se likh do. Taki wo do teen line, do teen line baad mein ek line mein convert hoke call ho sake. Baki koi cheez uh, matlab there is nothing uh, so uh, marvelous about this function. Uh. Uh, only thing is this line pe aap wo do teen line shift karoge wahan tak jo bhi competition hua hai usko pass karna padta hai function ko that we call arguments 
और जो भी फंक्शन करता है उसको पॉसिबली रिटर्न करना पड़ता है दैट वी कॉल अ रिटर्न सो वी विल सी द फोर्थ केस वेर वी एक्चुअली आर्ग्यूमेंट्स आर पास एंड वैल्यूज आर ऑल्सो रिटर्न दिस इज द आइडियल वे ऑफ राइटिंग अ फंक्शन दिस इज द फोर्थ टाइप वेर वी एक्चुअली पास अ आर्ग्यूमेंट डू सम ऑपरेशन एंड वॉट आर दैट फंक्शन रिटर्न दैट वी टेक सो हियर इंक्लूड एस टी डी आर डॉट एच वी डिफाइन अ फंक्शन कॉल चेक प्राइम नंबर आई एन टी एन देन इंट मेन यू विल आस्क यूजर टू डिक्लेयर एन एंड फ्लैग इट विल आस्क यूजर टू एंटर अ पॉजिटिव इंटीजर ही विल एंटर समथिंग दैट विल बी स्टोर्ड इन टू एन एंड देन आई विल से रिटर्न मी अ फ्लैग एंड आई विल राइट चेक प्राइम नंबर एन सो नाउ एन इज एंटर्ड बाय द यूजर दैट आई विल पास टू द चेक प्राइम नंबर फंक्शन and then uh, that flag got returned so if the flag is 1 it is not a prime number else the it is a prime number so this is a ideal code among the four cases so what is there inside check prime number the remaining part of the code which is int i then for i equal to 2 and less than 2 and by 2 i plus plus just check and uh, if i modulo n modulo i is equal to equal to 0 return 1 else return 0 so very straight forward there is no need to declare a flag inside this because whatever you return will be assigned to the flag into the main code so input from the user is passed to the check prime number function the check prime number function checks whether the argument passed is prime or not and if the argument passed is zero it will uh, return the non prime functions uh, even it will return the one and if the flag variable is set it depending upon the value of the flag variable whether it is a prime number or not will get displayed by the main function so which approach is the better aisa kisi ne sawal pucha to mera personal stand rahega agar aapne function likha hai to at least usko kuch to pass karo one of function likhne ka point kya tha aur wahan se kuch to return lo so my my personal example is fourth option is always the better and uh, in this writing also it is mentioned that it depends on the problem what you are trying to solve in this particular case passing an argument and returning a value from a function example 4 is better a function should perform a specific task so a function can't take input uh, nor displays it uh, with the appropriate message this kind of function is not very useful now we go to the something called as c recursion so recursion means uh, using the same program again and again uh, most of the times recursive programs are dangerous because they can put you into a infinity loop also so how particular recurse loop works just look at this particular case you defined a function called recurse okay and then inside a recurse you give a call to recurse so once your main loop starts it will hit recurse it will take you to the uh, to the recursive function and then inside the recursive function you are getting called by the recurse only so wo isi mein ghumta rahega zindagi bhar so iske sath do while ya if statement dalna bahut zaruri hai otherwise it is the recursive functions are actually a infinity functions aur ye use kahan ho sakta hai ek simple example loge to aapki ghadi mein aapki ghadi ek bar chalu kar di to aapko usko chalu hi rakhna hai band karna hi nahi hai so in such cases recursive functions are very useful even in most of the cases where you use a arduino like board there is a loop function so that loop is basically a type of recursive function which get called automatically again and again so this is how a recursive function works uh, your program will come to the main it will start running some statements then recurs it will take you to the recurs when it starts running the recurs it will keep on calling recurs remember anything you write below this recurs will not get executed and in uh, in your top recruiters they generally put this kind of constraint and people do write output based on these lines below recurs but remember you will never gonna hit to this point until and unless you write something like if or do while so recursive functions are dangerous and they typically put your uh, c program into a infinity loop so if recursion continues the condition uh, there should be some condition met to prevent it uh, generally if else statements or similar approaches are used for the recursive function here is one example 
uh, find the sum of the natural number using recursion. So we have already write, wrote this program, but without using a recursion. So let us understand how this particular program works. Focus on this first line. Include stdr dot h. Ye library inclusion ke liye. Second line is int sum int n. So basically, you declare a function. Huh? This is a function prototyping statement whose name is sum. Or usko pass kiya jane wala hai int n naam ka ek argument. Then comes to the main program. So int main bracket open bracket close. I don't mind even if you write void main. Or yaha pe char libraries include karoge. So acha rega. Next is int number comma results, then semicolon. So there are two variables declared, number and result. Then printf, enter a positive number, percent d, what is that number that we read, and result equal to sum of number. Okay, so this is basically a recursive function, and that will avoid one of my for loops, because it will keep on calling itself till the condition fails. And then sum equal to percent d, show the results, return zero. Here in the sum block, you will write int sum, int n. So whatever n being passed from the main loop will get entered over here. Then inside the curly bracket, until n becomes zero, you keep doing this. Return n, that is the past value, plus sum of n minus one, that is the second last value. And it will keep on doing this until and unless you hit not of zero. And once you finish this particular loop, you will say return zero. So this is how you write a user-defined function called sum to calculate the sum of the natural numbers. Again, after the lecture, you have to write this program also. But instead of sum, you will take a very large number and you will keep subtracting the numbers using a recursive function type. So initially, a sum is called in the main function and the number is passed as an argument. Suppose the value of n inside is 3 initially. Then during the next function call, it is decremented to 2 and uh, some function will continues to run until n becomes 0. When n is becoming 0, the if condition will be false and then else part of the loop will get executed, which will bring back the main program flow to the main function. So this is how this particular uh, code is running. So when uh, some result number equal to 3, it will uh, add 3 plus 3, 6 will get returned as well as n will be reduced by 1. So basically, it will return the value of n minus 1. Then again, uh, you, it will come to the same block. Again, n equal to n minus 1. So this time, your n was already reduced. So this time, it will just return the uh, 1 value, that is 2 minus 1. And in the third execution, it will return 0. And this particular execution, it will stop. So this is how the particular program will keep on running. And then finally, int sum is your previous sum plus sum of n minus 1. That is whatever results you got. Uh, they will get added to your final results. So this is how the particular code is running. Now there are some advantages and disadvantages of recursion. Recursion makes program elegant. So if you make a very small mistake, you can be into an infinite loop. Being said that it is very important concepts frequently used with data structures and algorithms. And a common recursion problem is as simple as your tree transfer. So next we are going to learn is about C storage class. So there are something called as scope and lifetime or local and global variables. And when we didn't have function, वो स्टोरेज क्लास का कोई यूज नहीं था सब एक ही मेन में थे या ग्लोबली डिफाइंड थे बट नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न वेदर इट विल बी अ स्टैटिक और अ फंक्शन डिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल सो लुक एट दिस स्लाइड वेरी केयरफुली एवरी सी प्रोग्रामिंग हैज टू प्रॉपर्टीज दैट इज टाइप एंड स्टोरेज क्लास द टाइप रिफर्स टू द डेटा टाइप ऑफ द वेरिएबल एंड स्टोरेज क्लास रिफर्स टू द स्कोप और विजिबिलिटी एंड द लाइफ टाइम ऑफ द वेरिएबल so there are four uh, storage classes. We have already seen what is uh, integer type. They say int, hua, float, hua, binary, hua, or uint. Hua. Similarly, storage class kya kya hota hai? Uh, first is automatic, second is external, third is static, and fourth is the register storage. So let's understand them one by one. First one is a local variable. So local variables are declared inside a block 
and they are automatic or local variables the local variables exist only inside the block in which they are declared for example yahan pe ek program dekh rahe ho jisme main mein humne int i declare karke rakha hai and then uh, outside we are just printing the value of i when you run this above program you will get an undeclared identifier i kyunki wo kaha define hua tha for loop ke andar तो so, जैसे ही आपने फॉर लुक खत्म किया वो फॉर लुक के बाहर जो आय था उसको डिस्प्ले नहीं कर पाया सो पर्टिकुलरली सेकंड लास्ट लाइन थर्ड लास्ट लाइन जो है प्रिंट एफ परसेंट डी कॉम आई विल शो एन एरर शोइंग दैट आई इज नॉट डिक्लेयर एट ऑल सो व्हेन यू रन दिस प्रोग्राम दिस आई डिक्लेरेशन वॉज मिसिंग लेट्स टेक अनदर एग्जाम्पल वेर यू डिक्लेयर इन एन वन एंड इन साइड फंक्शन यू विल डिक्लेयर वेरिएबल एन टू so in the above example the n1 is out of scope uh, for uh, the func uh, element and similarly n2 is out of scope for the main element so n2 is only local to func and n1 is only local to the main function so you cannot uh, access n1 inside func and similarly we cannot access n2 inside the main function So even main मतलब नाम में बड़ा लग रहा है फंक्शन पर उसकी वैल्यू कुछ अलग नहीं दी है इन लोगों ने मेन के अंदर डिक्लेयर है तो वो मेन से रीड होगा मेन फंक्शन दूसरे फंक्शन से जाके वेरिएबल नहीं रीड कर सकता नाउ सेकेंड टाइप ऑफ वेरिएबल डिक्लेरेशन इज कॉल्ड ग्लोबल ग्लोबल वेरिएबल माई पर्सनल फेवरेट बिकॉज इट रिमेन्स कॉन्स्टेंट थ्रू आउट यूर प्रोग्राम सो बेसिकली यू डिक्लेयर यूर बेसिक थिंग्स लाइक इंक्लूड एस टी डी आर डॉट एच कॉन डॉट एच एंड एक्सेट्रा then you write, write a function prototype that we are going to write a function on display then bracket open close then you declare a global variable so this is outside the main loop as well as outside the user defined function uh, then you write n plus plus display return okay and inside the display again you write n plus plus display and what is the variable you want to display so here n was declared only once and used throughout the functions so there are some variables which are globally defined such as value of pi and so on so whenever we hit some kind of programming like that i will tell you this is a global variable declare next comes a register variable so register is like a keyword used to declare a register variable a register variable were, were supposed to be faster than logical variables because they are stored on to a physical memory however the modern compilers are very good at code optimization and there is a rare chances of someone using a register variable to make their program faster unless you are working in a embedded system where you know we have to optimize the code to give the maximum performance using a register variable next type of variable is called static variable so static variable is declared by the keyword called static and then you write static int i as the name suggests static will store the variable but it will store only once so here is a one example where we declare a static variable inside of a user defined function called display so here you will say include stdi.h void display then you call display twice so in the first call uh, the display value will be assigned that is 5 plus 1 becomes 6 and it will print a value and again when you call it will become 6 plus 5 so total answer will be 11 and that will get displayed via static variable so now we will go into the programmings of the pyramid type and i will stop recording now if you have any doubts you can ask me and uh, then we will continue with our next experiment number 5